Epstein, how's it going? Hi, Derek. Good to hey, see you. Good, yeah, good to see you again. Um, if you guys don't know Christine, check, uh, follow her on LinkedIn. The micro 45-second uh, videos that she does, uh, hilarious and straight to the point, which is kind of something that I love to do is get straight to the point. Um, but other than that, Christine, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What have you been doing for the last few years? You know, I've been doing a lot of things in the retail in universe uh, between working directly with brands and retailers, direct to consumer, academics, researchers, real estate. Um, and you know what I've started to do is just say I make cool videos. Um, yeah. And you know what? I can uh, synthesize information into either like sub 30 seconds, sub 60 second uh, nuggets. And I'm we're going to we're I love the nuggets uh, line from you. We're going to hopefully hit a lot of nugs here. Um, there's so many talking points and the future is really important because we're coming. Um, the future of e-commerce is important and using a tech stack resource source such as your own is really important because there's been a lot of stuff. Now there's all this other stuff. What do you do? Do you sit still? Do you make changes? And what happens when you do make changes? So I can't wait to get into it. Your guest list and your sponsor list is so exclusive. It's like Studio 54 in 1978. The fact <laughs> okay. that I'm even here. I got the shirt for like, the party too. So. Unbelievable. Like nerds <laughs> unite because I was definitely not getting in there. I was, I was not the archetype. Uh, but I feel very blessed and I'm at your disposal. So um, let's get into it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, since you're on the pulse of retail tech and, and seeing this kind of firsthand, and I know that you're also working with technology providers to better kind of connect them with merchants. So you're, you're really right in the thick of this. Uh, what's happening in retail tech right now and what should retailers specifically, but of course we're here today talking e-commerce and retailers. And I think there's always a bridge somewhere between the two. Uh, and, and so what's going on in the industry and how might it pertain to e-commerce or even D2C brands thinking about moving into retail? Okay, let's get into it. There's two major categories that are uh, coming to the forefront. Everyone's screaming, but what is really, where should you focus, right? So the first one is loyalty. So any type of app or widget or API, API better than, than widget, um, to dovetail into your system that works well with and plays well with others, that is critical, uh, is really... Uh, a driving a business driver. So I'll comment on that in a second because I want to just tell you the second thing. And the second thing yeah. is AI, 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 AI. I thought you might say AI. That's <laughs> happening in AI. So yeah, I mean, um, ad optimization using AI is one example of a relatively new-ish way to use AI that is just a game changer. So let's come back to that. Let's go back to loyalty. Yeah, okay. I was I was gonna get back there. <laughs> okay. This is a big one for me. All right, wait, I want to ask the question. So you go. Retail is offline. You know, loyalty kind of exists in our head. You know, which is, so it kind of is an online component. There usually you might be tracking loyalty online. How do we bridge offline loyalty, online loyalty, and then just the overall concept of loyalty? Because I think this gets kind of tricky. Okay. Well, first, I'm going to talk about loyalty in general and how it okay. has transformed retail. And then we'll talk, we'll address uh, your your specific question. So if you have been following the largest retailers, and I'm going to speak very broadly. I mean, Chipotle is a retailer, right? Domino's is a retailer. They're selling something. Restoration Hardware is a retailer. All of their business models have been propelled by loyalty. The Target and Ulta partnership was a result of the, of the loyalty programs. And my opinion is very top line that if you could have a loyalty program that works to sell burritos and you can have a loyalty program that works to sell $30,000 sofas, somewhere in that ecosystem, whatever a person is selling online, they can have loyalty as well. Now, specific to your question, there are amazing apps and API um, again, preferred API solutions that can dovetail and create uh, loyalty programs. I mean, they're fully customizable. So loyalty is based on segmentation and segmentation is based on RFM, recency, frequency, 
monetary interaction. Yeah. All of this is is very much a these are all tent poles in almost every form of technology, including your sponsors, Omnisend comes to mind. Uh, so they may be an email marketing camp campaign program, but they're going to feed the loyalty. You're going to use mm -hmm. a loyalty app, but with everything kind of geared towards that uh, and going into uh, offline, going into the pandemic, I said to everyone with the store, I said, make sure they remember you <laughs> because everyone's feet were retrained. So you may have been a resource for whatever, but I'm trained to go to a different retailer now because they were allowed to be open. So like Marshall's got their lunch stolen by Target because everyone was like, oh, this works. I do this now. Uh, so let's not let that happen to all size retailers. Yeah, and this is why it was important to have a loyalty program before the pandemic so that you could be collecting email or SMS or text messages or phone numbers, I guess what I mean, uh, and, and then continue the conversation, even if you're not selling product to them, continue the, the conversation through the pandemic so that, like you said, they remember you. I think it's just also interesting you say the the they their feet were retrained because I am walking into a different store. And I think a lot of that store, as we saw, and I think we'll see some graphs from Gorgeous and maybe a few others about the spike that happened, you know, back in May, June of 2020 and how e-commerce has continued to be, uh, the, you know, the main source of what people uh, do, you know, um, as opposed to, so I don't think they're actually going to go that much further back to retail. So if you don't have those credit, the, those informations, the personally identifiable information from them, then you may have lost them to a competitor already, which is scary to think about because it's not even like you have a bad product or they were pissed off at you. These are people who, who liked you and, and now they're, they're leaving. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just because we're human and we're like, last place we went, oh yeah, I'll just go back there. You just sort of like, you don't want to think about it. Um, but Gorgeous is an amazing solution. I am I am thrilled that they're one of your sponsors and and when they when they get into their product, it's such a great, great, great solution. Let's talk about privacy. So I'm sure Omnisend will get into it, but and I'm and I'm sure it will come up throughout these amazing two days. But Apple iOS 15 is expected to change and add on more privacy options for all people using um, Apple information. So we had that last PII um, update with iOS 14. Now in 15, what's happening? All emails that go to an Apple email, iCloud or other, will be reported back to the sender as opened. Huh. Let me explain. All opens, everything will be 100% open. So if you <laughs> are this like, let me look at my opens as like a as like a metric, you'll be like, oh my God, I wrote the best email. Everyone opened it. No, it's no longer a metric. So Omnisend, I'm sure will will share with you their sub blog called opensardead.com. <laughs> and they sure are. It's just not a metric anymore. And they suggest, they make suggestions and there are suggestions and I have my opinion on, on it, of course, on what the new metric is. We have a lot of opt-in opportunities and it's expected to happen somewhere between September and November. So this is something you really need a strategy for it now. They highly recommend, you know, actually two months ago, starting to clean up your list and get opt-ins and also start uh, out. They actually say to do instead of AB testing, and I wish I knew the Greek alphabet better, but A, B, C, D, alpha, beta, yeah. something, like delta. delta. No, yeah. what is it, A, no? Uh, I, didn't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Cornucopia? <laughs> sure. um, so anyway, yeah, so really, um, I encourage everyone, and maybe you drop it in the chat, www.opensardead.com. And that's pretty straightforward. We talk about a great kind of, you know, landing page. Uh, so privacy is, uh, let's get back to privacy. So people want, get this, I'm an e-com retailer and pe my clients want both privacy mm -hmm. and personalization. <laughs> what now? <laughs> this is a fight. Yeah, this is a battle. Okay. And the AI is getting really good at recommending to me what I like and what I want, but if the merchant can't see who I am, then they can't personalize to me. So how do we how do we fight this battle? 
Well, uh, opt-ins is one. Also, you mentioned it, and I'm going to call it text because my clients, they're like, SMS, what's that? <laughs> um, you know what? Text. And uh, text is a great way to deliver personalized information. Getting there, however, is tricky. Lots of uh, permissions, FTC restrictions, et cetera. However, uh, I believe right now with, with email coming down and also, of course, being too overwhelming, moving to text makes sense when there's engagement. So there's text sales, text marketing. And so I think communicating with someone after they've made a transaction is how they want to be communicated to. This is my personal opinion, and there are lots of tech solutions out there that can do this. S letting someone know there's something new in the store uh, is, is definitely an alpha beta all the way through situation, and you want to proceed very cautiously. And basically, the days of all caps, 50% off your next pizza big sale from a five-digit code is yeah. over. Forget it. We're not talking about that. We're very modern and we're very futuristic. So that's not part of our dialogue. I got you. Here, I'm going to bring up a text. I've been subscribed to one of our merchants, Betty's, for a while. I want to bring up their text chains because I, I think they're blending this kind of nicely. Um, here, I'm, I'm just going to read them to you because I don't think you could see the screen. And I think I've thought that these are kind of salesy, but I'm also betting they work. So it says Betty's free, all caps. I'm yours and your mind pillow cover is almost gone. Get yours plus 15% off using code I'm yours. Shop and save here, link. Um, so what do, you, what do you think? This is like clearly a broadcast message. Uh, too, too much, yeah, I think I'm seeing the too much face. <laughs> I, I agree that I think it's, it's all, they're all sales. Ending tonight, huge summer blowout sale, you know. Uh, so yeah. So what do you think? The, they're, yeah. they're working, now they're converting. So Betty's is gonna be like, you know, we make $40,000 per SMS blast. Like, why wouldn't we keep going? And I honestly don't know. You know what? Is. That's cool because I would opt out of it because I'm not their customer. And whoever is engaging, as long as they're cleaning their list and, and flushing it out and then also growing it in various ways, getting signups via, I mean, you can sign up via um, OmniSend also, I think. Uh, they have the, S should we send this via SMS? Should we send this via text option? Um, so that's okay. It's totally okay. I just opted out of texts from um, a pretty high-end um, women's clothing company. It just, um, you know, what can I say? I'm Italian. You know, if that phone pings, someone's dead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. If I'm getting a text, especially during, you know, after 7 p.m., someone's in the hospital, they're dead, there was a car crash. Like, that's my reaction, right? So, it's a very um, serious channel in that regard. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone, everybody's different. And what's great about it is you can opt in, you can opt out at your leisure, at your pleasure. I actually, you know, I think also it feeds very much so traffic to uh, organic traffic to the website. So I think with respect to this particular texting to me, it was too frequent. I actually enjoyed it at first. So this goes back to personalization in a way. I think something missing from SMS, and I'd love to talk to the OmniSend team maybe at the end of their session later, uh, is how do we get the user? So they've opted into text. Now, how do, how do we let them self-select? Maybe I don't want the sales promos every week. Maybe I want like an update once a month, just like content, like blog content, you know, or or up or new smoothie recipes or something like that, you know, but I don't want your hard sales. I think they would answer like this. And of course we'll let them speak to it, but just speaking just um, generally is this is where your segmentation comes in. Segmentation is critical. So if someone, if you can look at on OmniSend where they buy, where they entered your store. So if they're always coming in on the biggest sales of the year, and you always see them engaging, you can make an assumption and put them on that yeah, big like sale that. customer bucket, okay? If they always come in in new arrivals, they're fashion forward. They don't mind paying full price. They wanna be first. They want, the, you make the assumption that they want to they see want new more frequently. And there are 
many other ways. I mean, to me, segmentation, well, I, I mean, I'm such, such a geek about it. So people, the how people, I think the fact that opens are dead is, it's okay. Show me what they're doing. This is, this is what, this is, and checking out, you can see if they look at the page, but you also can just really drill down. Let's go back to our RFM, yeah. the frequency on your site, the frequency on your site and their monetization. So that is really the filter with which to put people through. However, as a marketer and a someone who talks, maybe customers listen or maybe stores listen is no one ever really wants to be thought of as a number. You need to be so careful. Uh, this is a relationship you have with someone and you're like, oh, I like the people better who spend more. Yeah, Whoa. I like the $500 buyers, not the $200 right. buyers. Oh, come Whoa. on. <laughs> this is not about, you know, uh, when, when you read preference, it's personalization. Let's get the right messages to the right people because we respect everybody. So, yeah. And by the way, RFM, uh, Peel Insights, one of our sponsors, you plug into their uh, system and you're going to get an easy, easily digestible RFM model on your customers. And then you can create those segments. I think that that was really brilliant. Sorry, getting a call. Uh, the, um, to, to break down texting by what you've seen behaviorally. And I think that there's, uh, there, there's just so much more that can be done there. Can AI create these segments for us? Is there is there something that, that can well, be done there? And, and who's doing that? Yeah. All right, well, you and I, I, have I happen to know a couple of AI. <laughs> Off camera, at yeah. length. AI is as good as the information it gets, right? We know this, right? Mm -hmm. And then exponential, it can be exponentially beneficial. So you hold its hand a little bit and you watch it and you clean it and then you keep doing that and then it's off to the races and you got to do it and you have to partner with um you work backwards from the most dreadful tasks that you have to do and and uh and go from there so let's talk about one scenario because ai is you have to remember it's a tool right so what is it gets so uh misrepresented as like an actual thing, right? No, it's a tool to yeah, do something. So <laughs> let's talk about the doing something. So I've seen now several companies, solutions, technology solutions that solve a major pain point and that's social media ads. So, you know, God bless social media ad managers who basically are like, pay me, but I don't know how it works. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, Facebook okay. does uh, okay. the algorithm stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, you know what? That's the perfect thing to punt to AI. So, what you can do is you can create your own ad, you can get, they can create the ad, and then off it goes. There's 17 different social, social places to place ads. And then, um, and you have a subscription to do this. And then the information comes back and you don't have to select all 17. Not everyone should be on Snapchat. Um, but what should you be on? You know, head scratcher and a lot of pain to get there. So you just, you kind of, uh, it is a, it is a um, empirically run database uh, insight format. So let the AI go for it and be smarter, work smarter, not harder, right? That's a really good example of, of that. And two, two ways in which I've seen AI work in that sense. And I'm actually the advisor to a company that just launched a tool called Preflect that does this. Nice. It's taking some of your better you, RFM data. So Facebook often looks at conversion events and a conversion event you know, is a purchase, but you want lifetime value or recharge recurring subscription purchases, which are hidden data points. So, uh, so this tool actually takes in all of that like customer centric data that you have that Facebook might have a, a ounce of, but not complete clarity around, and then optimizes ad campaigns and lookalike audiences accordingly. And then there's another tool called Pencil, which is quite brilliant because, uh, and they'll be showing either later today or tomorrow. I'll double check the schedule in a second. Um, they'll be showing you how if you just put all of your ad assets into like all your brand and, and ad assets into their thing you can kind of just spin out about like a 10 or 15 second Instagram or Snapchat ad or whatever format you want actually. And then it'll automatically test word overlays, placement, 
putting this scene before that scene. And it, it records all of these differences, including color variations and, and when the product is shot versus when it's like somebody action shot with the product. It like understands all these things and then puts thousands of ads out there. Well, dozens of ads out there and then sees which ones perform and then informs you like, hey, these are the things that are working. Here's the language that's working. Here's the here's the visuals that are working. And then, you know, you can go create different content for it. Most importantly, your ads are being AI optimized in real time. And it's like between the two of those things. Yeah, your your media agency is uh, the, the media agencies are going to have a hard time over the next 10 years. I ran a social media advertising agency in the past. The job is becoming so easy that you don't need a human to do it anymore so that that job's getting pinched i would say pretty pretty hard yeah it's a middleman role that that's get getting out yeah. there and uh that so what you just described as pencil sounds incredible i would recommend to everyone on this call yeah, from we have them. It's to really Canada, cool. um mm -hmm. to demo it tomorrow not tomorrow do this tomorrow and then do it the next day yeah. Uh, I want to comment on something and we can come back to AI. You called your company a weird business model. I think what you do is incredible because what you just said helped all these people and it'll be a thousand people or more uh, just be like, okay, I'll do that. I'll try that. Um, and really just providing the, the pros, the cons, the ins, the outs, the matching, the tech st stack modeling for uh, people with that human touch uh, and experience is is not weird at all. Actually, I would say it's genius. Thanks. And for pencil, I do recommend it for brands doing over about thirty thousand in ad spend a month. Uh, below that, you you've got to kind of do it on your own. And while their their tool isn't that cheap, it's not that expensive. It's just that like you want to make sure you're always getting the ROI from something like this and it scales as ad spend scales because squeezing out, you know, an extra 10, 20, 50, even 200% return on ad spend, you know, obviously very big on bottom line growth and all of those things. I'm yeah. share it with everyone here in the chat. Great. And there are a couple, uh, there are a couple of solutions out there. And if someone called you, I'm sure if, let's say I was, I have a question for you. Yeah. Let's say I was, like, hey, I did some initial search and I went on Captera and I have like four companies I'm thinking of demoing. Here they are. Would you say these two? Yes. These two? No. Add this. Is that some part of what you do? Um, yeah, I, I think we're, you know, we're always trying to just figure out what is going to make the merchant the most money as well as what can they actually do? So I've talked to merchants who like they don't have email set up at all. And they're doing a million a year and i look at the and it's like you know a founder maybe a, a founder and his wife uh and the, uh, the brand that comes to mind is a retail shoe company that moved to direct to consumer and uh they still sell a lot in retail but they get repeat purchases online so they don't really advertise the store online and email just hasn't been a big deal for them they don't know how to do email marketing so recommending the a good email service provider to them is it only brings them so far like you know, I, I'd have to train them in all of email marketing for them to get better at it, or I'd have to recommend a consultant. And, you know, they're at the stage of business where it's like the consultant's kind of going to be expensive compared to the revenue they'll make from the list. So they're in this weird spot where they either have to learn and execute on their own, they can do nothing and kind of miss out on money, or they have to spend a lot and get like an okay return, but not a great return. And so I think about that all the time when I'm recommending a, a, a tool to somebody. I worry that I'm gonna make a great recommendation, but it's gonna fall flat because the business is, isn't going to succeed on it. So, you know, take these two tools away, add these two tools here, and it is it's like, that works, it doesn't just work for, you know, this company because they do a million in revenue or 500,000 revenue or, or because yeah. they're running Facebook ads. It's like, who is in the organization that is also going to be owning this, accountable for it? And how are we gonna make sure the tool actually ROIs? Because most tools aren't plug and play, they require some form of oversight or executional work, sometimes daily, weekly, monthly, and it's important to understand those. So I'm literally building an algorithm to understand all of these things. It's quite a task, I can tell you, but it's not impossible to do. We just need all the data points, meaning I need to understand who is in the company and what they like to do. I need, to, and, and that's a data point that like, you know, no technology company is capturing today. So it's kind of manual. And then I need to understand the tools you currently have and how they're performing. And then I have to understand everything about your store, your industry, 
how many product lines you're going to launch next month. Like the list kind of gets so crazy that it's like, Derek, there's no way you can capture all that data to make a good recommendation. And then we're back to the manual consultative process, which has been working very well for merchants, but I can only have so many calls every day. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I know you have big things on the horizon and it's it's wonderful and whatever you want to share throughout the, this conversation or going forward. I want to talk about not that type of company. I want to talk about um, when uh, I want to talk about someone who's really deep into e-com, right? So let's talk about the future of e-com. Yeah. And w one of the things that is kind of... Um, has been known is a little controversial, uh, but uh, is worth putting on someone's time horizon, like a project to do. And then this is a larger volume store is to clean their code. Okay. Yeah. So let's say they've been, you know, e-com driven and they had, a, they had, they're growing and they put a bunch of apps on there. And then maybe they even wrote a little bit of code and they had a developer yeah. years ago and then four years ago and then so there's um there is there are tech solution providers that will go in and assess your load time not google something else um and then and for free uh, something like test my load time dot com something yeah something. test my page speed um andrew um Duro has been on this show before and he's uh, like a specialist in this What's his company name? Uh, Ecom Experts. I want to say .io. Uh, okay. Well, it makes may, my store speed. Yeah. Maybe that one or someone else. So basically, yeah, there's a few others. They'll they'll give you a score, and they're not giving you a score to you know you need to trust that this is an on this is honest feedback. Let's just start there. Right? They work with a reputable company. They don't. They have so much business. They don't need right more. So um, they'll give you a score, and you know what? It could be messy in there. Your load time could not be what it should be. And that has a real impact on the bottom line. Um, so this is definitely for more of a sophisticated e-com brand retailer. Um, and you would want to go forward with a strong partner who's going to take care of that for you and do all the things <laughs> and keep it clean and plan for your future. Right. So you've come this far. You've done great. It's maintenance. It's, you know, you got to get in there and it's like, a, yeah, I, I like to think we're capex expenditure. You got to like refresh every five years, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. You ho yeah. Hopefully even sooner. And I think there's certain stages of growth as well as longevity that trigger these sort of SEO overhauls. You know, when you hit uh, 10,000 page visitors a month, you might do a minor SEO overhaul. When you hit 50,000 visitors a month, you might do a little bit bigger one. And then right around maybe 50 to 100,000, depending on average order value, you might be thinking about going headless. And I just learned two days ago of an alternative to headless commerce, uh, which is expensive, but I'm very bullish on this company. It's called Edge Mesh, and they have what's called Edge Mesh Server. So going headless has been a big pain in the butt for for merchants because you have to redesign the entire site on what's called a, a, a it's essentially somebody else's CDN. And what that means is that like so if you're on Shopify or Shopify Plus, Shopify doesn't actually have to load the page anymore. It's loaded in this like really fast and like instant way because it's kind of been preloaded or pre-optimized to load instantly instead of you know all the tools widgets all that stuff behind um that that's that's loading every time you you have to ping shopify server to get the information needed to download a page edge mesh server like takes over this whole process and becomes this headless commerce front end it's five thousand dollars a month though but they've seen people drop from nine second page speed load time to two and a half yeah. Uh, after going to it and it's like, you know, the, the money just starts to roll in. So it, there are things like that that are really incredible. My warning is just small stores are always too concerned about page speed load time. If you do a thousand dollars a month in sales, this is going to make it a thousand and ten. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like not a big deal. Like it's a it's a very small optimization that improves user experience, but needs to be taken at the, at different stages of growth and, and for the business. Right. I, 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 I'm with you with all of your points. All very good. Headless is for uh, big, big guys. Yeah, I think it's the necessary the evil. I think it's a necessary evil. I think there, everyone has to put it in their roadmap and you are the roadmap uh, king. I want to just talk <laughs> about another area that's uh, 
blowing up with respect to um, it's it's old and new. It keeps changing so rapidly. So you know, try to keep up. Is fintech? Um, you've got some on your on your on your guest mm -hmm. list here, and you know, it's like forget it. You know, like are you offering Venmo? Because if you're not, do it. Um, and and more and more. And I and I actually have a very uh, interesting. Uh, company to recommend more for brick and mortar. Uh, but you know, it's like you, you want to have choice and, and in talking, <laughs> talking to retailers or POS companies or digital companies or whatever, it's like, you, you could even offer Bitcoin. Oh, but Bitcoin's so volatile. I'm not talking about Bitcoin with you. I'm happy to discuss Bitcoin with you. I'm here to tell you that you need to offer choice period. Yeah. You want to, just talk about the benefits or the not benefits and Venmo's not FDIC insured. I'm not here to talk about that. Oh. I'm here to talk about you succeeding because you offer choice. They decide, they decide. Uh, and the, and we have, uh, you know, there's a payment company that's offering um, Weibo or whatever the, you know, the Chinese app, you just yeah. swipe the phone and off you go. And it's really blowing up in the larger retail um, kind of, um, legacy retailer where they have a lot of outlet stores and, you know, in preparation for all that, all that foot traffic that uh, was coming from overseas. Uh, the more you can offer, the better. When someone has to leave to go to the ATM, they're not coming back. Yeah, that's, that's a big problem. And uh, I do agree. It's about offering choice. There's a tool called Coin Payments that offers Bitcoin transactions online, which is very interesting. And you can choose whether you keep it in Bitcoin or instantly change it back to dollars to remove the volatility from it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's actually uh, pretty interesting. And of course, we've got Verifone here. So they they would plug their payment processor. And of course, I'm the guy that's all about choice. I don't know why I got blurry all of a sudden, uh, but just ignore my blurriness. Uh, Christine, uh, we've got to move into the next session. Final thoughts on uh, the future of e-commerce and technology, and then also, when should people reach out to you and talk to you directly? I'm, I'm available 24 seven like yeah. you. So um, my contact information is here. Thank you for listing me as a sponsor. I'm thrilled, honored and more to kick off this incredible two day program. If everyone hasn't seen my cool video on all the amazing guest speakers that are here, check it out at rccagency.com slash events. You're already here but just to get a sense of under 30 seconds, what, what you're in for and that the most important thing is that you are here. Um, I'm happy to be here. And Derek, two seconds for the drawdown. What's in your roadmap? You tell us. Uh, oh, well, for me as a technology company, um, I mean, for right now, it's all about building uh, this, this product, the recommendation engine, and there's a referral engine component that has to lay on top of it. And so I am looking for uh, merchants to beta test this tool I need to see how people want to interact with it because um, there's nothing out there like this in the market. So this is like, you know, it's kind of a, a, we're at a, a risky stage. We need to make sure that people actually want to take recommendations from us instead of Google uh, and, and that they're going to remember us and come back to us on their next tech uh, you know, selection and that they trust us with their stack data. So there are uh, there are just a whole bunch of you know questions that need to be answered. They need to be answered by merchants, I, you know, by being in the market with, with our products. So we have to right. build it out and get to the market. Then of course, we've got our events next month and I'll go ahead and say we have e-commerce day coming up in May, 2022 in Los Angeles. Thanks for giving me the plug. <laughs> of course, I'll leave everyone with two words, which is a, a, a exclamation point in the end of what you just said. It's duct tape. Don't duct tape your, duct tape your stacks. Make sure they play nicely with each other use a, te a tech stack resource that Derek offers. Google will not tell you what plays nicely. You will in, you could, it could be great now. And as you grow in 18 months, it doesn't work. You want to do this again? No. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And this is always part of the conversation when I talk to merchants. Christine, thanks so much. We're going to move into the next session. I need to get off screen as fast as possible. This blurriness thing is, is messing with me. Hi, everyone. Thank you for my camera. I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. Got uh, this. Anyways, uh, Christine, we'll, we'll, we'll see you at a future event, I'm sure. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of those 45-second videos from you in the future. Absolutely. Awesome. Bye, Derek. Bye, everyone. Bye.